In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the coping saw and show you how to use it safely when cutting through a block of wood. Step 1. Identifying the parts. Your average coping saw looks like this. It has a wooden tapered handle, a tight end pin that should remain secure at all times, a blade that has teeth that will point out away from the saw and down towards the handle, a loose end pin that will move freely without the blade, and a metal frame. Step 2. Replacing the blade. Replacing the blade is fairly simple, but it does take a little bit of practice. The first step is finding out where your teacher stores the replacement blades, but also disposing of the old broken one. Once you have your new blade, you want to make sure you put it in so that the teeth are pointing in the proper direction. In this case, we want the teeth pointing out and down towards the handle so it cuts when you pull, not when you push. We'll place the blade into the tight end pin and place our thumb over the top, holding it in place so it does not slide out as we replace it. You'll also notice at this point that the blade is not long enough to reach to the loose end pin. That's because in a moment we're going to use some force against our table bench to bend the frame in, catching it on the other part of the blade. Let's try it. The perfect spot to use is the corner of your table and your vise so your blade is not going to slide. At this point, I will lean my body weight in against the back of the handle, pushing until I can get the blade into the loose end pin. Once it's rested in, I can back up, and the tension of that frame wanting to pull back this way is what will hold this in and allow you to cut. Step 3. Cutting safely. Now that we've identified the parts and learned to replace the blade if necessary, it's time to start cutting. I'm going to use this 3 quarter inch pine board. The first thing I did is take my speed square and a pencil to lay out the marks that I need to cut. I've also included a line across the top as a guide. The first thing I want to do with my coping saw on my guideline is to take the blade and slide forward two to three times. The tips of the teeth will dig in and keep the blade stationary in that place as you begin. If you fail to do this step, then on your first pull stroke, your saw may slide, making your cut less accurate. If you feel confident in cutting with one hand, you want to make sure that the line of your blade goes straight through to your elbow. If you are turned in any way, the saw and the blade will turn with you. If you're cutting with two hands, then the saw should be directly in front of you and the blade line should go straight back to your chest. When we start cutting, we begin our first pull stroke and continue nice and even, keeping our eye on the guide and adjusting if necessary. It's important to remember that as you're cutting, you need to keep your blade parallel and even to the table but also pointing directly across from you. If it is slanted or tilted or twisted, then your lines will not line up from the front of the board to the back of the board. To remove the blade from a cut, you simply keep the saw moving back and forth while raising it up and out of the cut that you just made. To cut curvy or wavy lines, we use the same steps. I will take my speed square, give myself a guideline across the top, and also draw my curve on the face of the board. At this point, I continue the same way I would have before, taking my saw blade and pushing it forward two or three times on my guideline. At this point, I can begin cutting. You'll notice that as I cut the curve, the only thing that will change is my rotation of the saw to the left or to the right. The blade will always remain parallel to my workspace and pointing directly across from me. And just as before, to remove the blade, keep the saw moving back and forth and slowly pull it back out of the cut.